Hi, welcome to this demonstration of using a forecasting tool, a forecasting method to look at both trend and seasonal components. So this method is called the linear trend multiplicative method because we're going to uh, take a linear trend value and multiply it by a seasonal factor of some sort. So this data here, I have collected some data on monthly sales of marine flares. I have two years worth of data. Now marine flares uh, have to be replaced every four years. So there's a regular demand for uh, replacement marine flares. And it follows a seasonal pattern. If we plot these two years worth of data, we can see in the chart here that we have the 2009 values are all a little above the 2008 values. So we can, that would indicate that there is a rising trend. Sales are increasing. And there is definitely a seasonal component. So the start of the boating season in May is our peak sales. There's also a little peak here in January. That's when the boat sale is. And people quite often buy their flares at discounted prices at the boat show. So the first thing I want to do is look at the trend component of, of this time series. And so I'm going to take my two years worth of data and I'm going to put it into one long linear trend. So this, I'm going to take that two years and go from months 1 to 24 and copy this is the 19, the 2008 data, this is the 2009 data. So my months go from 1 to 24 and I've got a chart, corresponding chart over here that shows months 1 to 24 and I can see the pattern of my of my sales. Now to look at the trend, we could put a trend line on the data. So I can add a trend line, add a linear trend line. I also get will ask it to give me the equation of that line. So here's my trend line and my equation. So you can see this is similar to a regression model. It's just that our independent variable along the x-axis here is time. So similar to our regression models, I can actually also get the parameters of that line by using the line est function. It was an array function, if you recall. And I can calculate a trend value or a predicted value for each month according to that trend line. I can do that using the trend function. So for my first 24 months here, I want it to fill in values for all of those cells. So I select all the cells. I say equals trend, which is an array function. I show it my y values, which is my set sold, comma. Then I show it my x value is my, are my months. I, because it's an array function, I hold down control shift keys and then I press enter. So now I have a predicted value according to the trend. So for each of these months, I have a value of the point on the line corresponding with that month. So for month five, my trend value is 90. So that means the point on the line corresponding with five here is 90. My actual, of course, was 115 because we have a seasonal component here. So that would be a trend forecast. Now I can take into account my seasonality. So I want to calculate a seasonal factor for each of these months where I have both an actual and a trend. So my seasonal factor is going to be equal to my actual value divided by my trend value. So I can see in month one, my seasonal factor is 0 0.90. If my seasonal factor is less than one, that means that I sell less than the trend value. 
If it's more than one, I sold more than the trend value. I can copy that down and get a seasonal factor for each of my 24 months. And I can see that I sell more than the trend value on four of the months in the middle of the year there. Um, and actually, and then the next year, I actually on in January, I sold, sold more than the trend value and then for another five months. I want to get an average here of these seasonal factors. I only have two years worth of data, but I will uh, do it as an average. So I can take my first 12 months of data, copy it, and I'm going to make a separate table here. I actually have to, I have the data here, but I can copy and I have to paste values because it's from, uh, because I have a formula in these cells. So same thing, I would take my months 13 to 24, copy them, and then paste them in under 2009 here. So paste values. I then am going to take the average of each of those. So this, I can just get rid of that for a moment. This is equal to the average of the two years worth of data that I have. I can then copy that and get my averages all the way down here. I then want to take that average seasonal factor, these averages, and bring them back over to my other table. So I'm going to copy that. And again, it's a formula in those cells, so I'm going to paste that here for months 1 to 12, but I have to paste it, paste values. And then I'm going to paste those averages again for months 13 to 24. So paste values. So I have an average seasonal factor for each month. So the average factor for January is 0.985. It was 0.909 here, and it was 1.061 here. So the av I'm going to use the average, which is 0.985. <clears throat> I will also... I want to predict values for the next uh, for the next year. So I'm going to take copy those averages, average seasonal factors down for the next for the third year in my time series here for so for months 25 to 36. Because I want to do a a forecast for the third year. I also need a trend value for the third year. So to do that, I can use my formula for my trend line. So that's going to be equal to A, and that's an absolute reference, plus B, and that's an absolute reference, times my independent variable, which is my month, and that's a relative reference. So I'll say enter, and then I can copy that formula down for the next, for the rest of the months in the third year. So I have a trend component for the third year forecasts. I have a seasonal component for the forecasts. So I'm going to calculate what my forecasted value would be for all three years. So my forecast is equal to my trend value times my average seasonal factor. You can copy that formula down for all three years. And so I have forecasts for the next year here. And I can also, I have this so that it will plot out here, I can see 
both my actual and my forecast values for all of those years. And I can see the forecast and the actuals are very, very good as far as the first couple of years. My forecasting tool is working well. And then I have a forecast out for the next year. So that's an example of the linear trend multiplicative model.